Welcome to the NASBA Executive Chat Series. Today we're sitting down with Maria Caldwell, NASBA's Chief Legal Officer and Director of Compliance Services. Maria, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about your educational and professional background. Well, I attended Fairfield University where I got my degree in economics and then went to Duke Law School. After that, I headed out to Los Angeles and worked at Gibson Dun & Crutcher in their corporate securities area and then ended up in Nashville doing the same thing at Bassbury & Sims and finally ended up going in-house with one of my clients when they went public and in 2003 landed at NASBA. So as NASBA's Chief Legal Officer and Director of Compliance Services, tell us a little bit about what you do. Well, like most people here at NASBA, I wear a couple of hats. With <laughs> my um, legal hat, I uh, review things from an operational nature that have some legal implications like human resources, data confidentiality, and uh, review of contract negotiations. Uh, as Director of Compliance Services, I oversee various lines of business, including the ALD, CPA Verify, National Registry, and Accountancy Licensing Library. You've been deeply involved with the development and launch of several products that enhance the effectiveness of state boards as well as serve the public. Tell us about some of those projects. Well, I think the biggest challenge NASPA faces with representing 55 boards of accountancy is keeping track of all of that data information and the differences between them. I would think a theme of our uh, most recent projects has been centralizing that information. For instance, the Accountancy Licensing Library is a centralized database of the licensing information for the 55 boards and the procedures and the forms that CPAs have to fill out to get licensed in a particular state. Uh, similarly, CP Tracking is a database and a rules engine for the CPE requirements of the 55 boards. CPAMobility.org is the database of the 55 uh, jurisdictions with respect to mobility. And then the ALD and CPA Verify now have data from almost 40 states um, and hopefully one day it will be all 55 as well. So how would you say your legal expertise impacts the products that NASBA offers? Well, at the end of the day, everything that the state boards do is tied back to the laws and the regulations that they promulgated. And so having that ability to analyze that information and then take the legalese out of it and turn it into a narrative form has been really helpful, I think, both to the, uh, the public and the boards that we serve. I know that California has recently passed mobility legislation joining 48 other states and the District of Columbia. Can you tell me how your area works with the state boards to kind of guide them through the passing of this legislation? Well, passing mobility laws has been a major accomplishment, and the boards have done a great job at embracing it. Um, but passing the legislation is the first step. They then adopt rules, and it's getting to understand those rules and working with the boards to see if there are any differences um, is where the legal team comes in. And then we populate cpaymobility.org with that information so that the public can gain access to that as well. Wow. <laughs> you're heavily involved in a lot. So out of all of those exciting initiatives, what would you say you're most proud of and why? Um, I think the two things that I'm most proud of is the overhaul that we did to the National Registry process and the revisions to the standards, as well as the momentum that we've gained in getting states to join the ALD and CPA Verify. Both of those have a big public protection aspect to them, and um, we're excited about the successes that we've achieved at both those places. NASMA recently hosted the first annual National Registry Summit, which was considered a great success. What would you say were some of the differences between the National Registry Summit as opposed to some of the conferences NASBA has hosted in the past for registry sponsors? There are several things that made it different than the conferences from the past. First is the relationship that we've built with our CP sponsors over the past, past years, as well as the conversation that got started around the process of revising the standards. We really reached out to all of the stakeholders and that dialogue continued at the summit. Um, I think another important difference was the content that we provided. Uh, there's a lot going on in the world of continuing education with four different um, generations working in the workplace, as well as the advent of new technologies for learning. There's a lot to learn and a lot to discuss, and we brought some really great speakers in to talk about those things. So what would you say attendees can expect from future National Registry Summits? I think they can expect the same kind of energy that we had at the last one and content that is focused on moving the quality of CPE forward so that um, the public will continue to be served by the enormous investment that both the profession and state boards make in CP. So can you tell us about some of the projects that you're currently working on that you're excited about? Well, we've always got something going on in the <laughs> Compliance Services Department for sure. I think uh, two of the projects that I'm most excited about are enforcement resources that we'll be providing to state boards. Uh, we have co compiled an enforcement resources guide that will be available on nasba.org behind a password protected area, and that should be coming soon. Uh, we're also working on a series of training modules for investigators and hope to have that uh, done sometime early next year. Um, on a separate note, we're working on a CP audit service that we're currently piloting with the Missouri Board of Accountancy. And what's great about that is we've taken resources that we'd already compiled 
within NASBA and put them together to have a service for the board. We've used the CP tracking rules engine along with the data feeds that we're getting for the ALD um, and then some software tweaks to provide a tool that the boards can use to audit their CPA population with regard to CPE. So hopefully it'll be a big success in its pilot stage and then we'll be able to offer it to more states. So stay tuned. Wow, that sounds great. Maria, thank you so much for taking the time to sit down to talk with us today. Thanks, Andy.